Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today we're continuing our journey with the Data Factory. And in this video I will show to you how you can read a JSON file from the Blob Storage to Azure SQL database using a copy data activity. And without further ado, let's jump into Data Factory and let's see how you can do this in action. Before we start to build our pipeline, we have to do some preparation work first. Let's first check out the Blob Storage. To this blob storage, I have already created a container for us to use in this tutorial called Tutorial 15 Source. In this container, I have one file called file1.json. And now let's check out the contents of this file. As you can see, we have a JSON object in this file. And in this object, we have one property called data. And this data property is an array that contains two more objects. In both objects inside this data array, we have five properties. We have property one, that is a string containing some text. Then we have property two, that is basically an integer value. Then we have property three, that is a Boolean value. And then we have a property four, that is another object. And in that object, we have one more property called for one, that is also a property that contains some string values. And our goal in this exercise would be to read in this whole JSON to the database. And for this, we would be using copy data activity. Now let's open up the management studio and let's create a schema for our tutorial 15 sync that we are going to use for the table to which we are going to write that JSON data into. Next, we can start to build our actual pipeline for this. Let's first create a folder for our pipeline called tutorial 15, and then we can create a pipeline to that folder and name the pipeline according to our naming conventions. Next step would be to add a copy data activity to this pipeline that is the only activity that we are going to use today. And again, we want to name our copy data activity accordingly. Then we can proceed to creating our data sets. We need one data set for the source and one data set for the sync. Let's first create a folder for our data sets. Then let's create the data set for our source. And this is going to be a blob storage. And then the file type is going to be JSON. Let's again name our data set and let's select the linked service that we are going to use that is pointing to our blob storage. And then we could point this data set to directly to our file1.json. But I don't want to do this in this hard coded way. So I will leave the path empty for now and we are going to use the parameters for the data set. So let's create a file path and file name parameters for this data set and let's configure them to the connection page so we can parameterize this data set accordingly. Since this is a way more proper way to use data sets rather than just hard code them point to a one specific file. So we can now create this kind of multi-purpose data set even though we will be using this data set in this tutorial just for that one file. And now we can go back to our pipeline and we can configure our source to use this data set. And here we can see the data set parameters that we just created and we can fill in the necessary information here. So we are going to point this data set to the tutorial 15 source and then the file name is going to be file1.json. And then we can use the preview data to check out that our path points to the correct file. And as we can see, this works, so we are now reading the correct file that we want. Next step in this process would be configuring our sync dataset. We want to create a new dataset for our sync and search for Azure SQL database. And then we are going to name our dataset according to our naming conventions and then select the linked service that we are going to use that is pointing to our SQL database. Again, I don't want to hard code anything to this data set, so we are going to use the parameters for this as well. Let's create parameters called schema and table and then use them in the connection page to dynamically decide the schema of the table and the actual table. And as a side point, if you are not familiar with these parameters and variables in the data factory, I would check out my video that I have made on those that can be found on my channel on the data factory playlist. Now we can go back to our pipeline and configure our schema and table to our sync dataset. 
One last option that I want to change in the sync dataset is the table option. I want the data factory to auto create the table since we have not created the table to the database. This auto create table is quite a cool feature in the data factory since it will allow us to create the table based on the data that is coming in. Next we are going to open the mappings page because here we need to configure how we are going to read the JSON file. We can press import schema and then the data factory will do some imports and import our mappings for us. But these mappings are not yet correct and probably some of you can spot what is wrong here. And with this mapping, if you are familiar with the notation that we're having here, this would read the first object from the data array with this notation. So we have first their data, then we have zero, which means the index zero of that array and then the property one, for example. But this is not what we want because with this setup, we would end up reading only the first object from that data array and we want them both. That's why we have this collection reference setting here. So we can use it to select the array from which we want to read from the data. And here we can see that data factory is all already suggesting us to use the data array as the collection reference here. After we have selected the data as our collection reference, we can import our schemas again, and then data factory will do the mapping properly when it knows that we want to read the data that is inside the data array in our JSON file. And now we can see that our mapping looks a bit different. First we have there the data array and then we have the properties that we want to read and their data types and then we're pointing them to a column name in the database. So basically the property name will be the same column name in the database. So they will map one to one. Also the data factory knows how to map the property that is inside the property for the nested, nested property. So basically with this setup we will end up having four columns in our database tables even though we have five properties because the property four is an object and we are just getting the contents of that object and not that object itself to the database. Also in this mapping we would be able to select some data types for our data but it is okay to leave them as empty and then the data factory will kind of guess what would be the correct data type for each column and this this usually goes all right but maybe a better practice would be to have them set here but let's just go without setting them for now because I know that I have a very simple JSON file and the data types are very easily guessable but if you have for example, some sample file that you are not sure of those data types, then would be more ideal to probably set them up because if the, for example, some number would look integer in your example file, but it is possible to have decimal values there, then you would probably want to set it as decimal or float type in the database. Now we can actually proceed and debug our run and see what happens. Our debug is running and it already finished. And now we can check out what we have in the database. We have there a new table in our schema tutorial 15 synced. And this table is called file one. And let's see what the contents of this table look like. We can see that there are two rows. That is correct since we had two objects inside our data array and the data looks the same as it was in the JSON file. So we have managed to successfully read the data from the JSON file to the database. We can also quickly check out the data types that our data factory created for these columns when we didn't specify them and we didn't have table ready. So basically those string values map to n varchar and they are maximum length. So data factory used that because it couldn't decide what would be the optimal and varchar length so it just used the max value and our integer mapped to big int that is a big integer then our boolean value mapped to bit in the database since we don't have boolean value available bit is basically zero or one meaning that true value will map to one and false value will map to zero now you should have a basic knowledge how to read a json file from the blob storage to azure sql database using a copy data activity as many of you probably noticed, we used a quite a simple JSON file in this scenario. And using a more complex JSON will get a bit tricky when using just the copy data activity. 
it would require probably you to use multiple copy data activities and peel off the layers if the JSON would have a lot of nested hierarchy in the file. For more complex and hierarchical JSON files, I would recommend using Databricks notebooks to parse out those, if Databricks is available in your environment. But this is way out of scope for this video and I'm not going to cover this topic today. If you enjoyed this video and found this information helpful, please leave a like to this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and Data Factory content. Now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.